All right, getting closer. All we gotta do now is final retorque. The heads are already on and torque. We torque them down to 75 foot pounds. And you can see it squeezes the copper coat out of there pretty good. You can see it really good on a couple of these spots. So uh, that was two coats on the gasket only. I did not put any on the heads and I did not put any on the block. So we'll see how it holds up this time. I may go buy me some head gasket repair, just some, some of the, the bars leak, just in case I have any seeps. But also on the studs, I put a little bit of the uh, plumber's goo just to make sure that nothing come up through the studs. Okay, we're moving right on along. Heads are on and torqued and then retorqued. See, I've got the little fingernail polish on all the studs that I retort. That's pretty important. I used to not do that, but going back and retorquing individually, uh, it's easy to lose track of where you're at. So that's just something I know a lot of the professional machine shops they do. And I often wondered why. And I mean, I was like, I can keep track of it, but this makes it so that it's clear as a bell. I do two at a time. So I would go this one and then this one, and then uh, untorque, retorque, and then mark it. And then two more and then that way i could just follow the pattern of this my watch chevrolet bolt pattern start in the middle and kind of work your way out and circle it and that's what we ended up doing so now all we got to do is we're going to go ahead and clean the push rods get those stuck in and go ahead and get the rock arms on it and go ahead and start getting this thing uh closer i mean we're really close the goal is tonight i did end up getting some parts and pieces i'm hoping to get the oil filter on it tonight and prime it this is the big block Chevrolet uh, stout pulley or bolt. So we'll see how that works out. Ordered some more O-rings and I did end up getting this MSD uh, cam sink. So we'll have to see how this thing works out. Um, spent a lot of time last night trying to make sure I realized and figured out exactly how to do that. Uh, so hopefully it'll be painless as far as getting it started. So we'll see. All right, check it out. Okay, so we're making some progress. All the rock arms are on it and adjusted. This time we tightened them up a little bit. We got 10 thousandths cold. Uh, that may, may be enough. I don't know if it's going to be or not. So I went ahead and took Randy's regulator off here. So I've got my regulator. Um, we're gonna stick this on. This is the one that I got. It looks like essentially my old one, but it should go on right here and still should should fit, I think. Uh, we'll take these off and then we gotta change this fitting. Actually, you know, I could. I might be able to do it like this. And it kinda depends on, on where it angles and that should just go right on in there. So that don't look bad right there, guys. So we could do it that way. And then when I turn it, it'll probably be kinda flush. Although that might be in the way. I gotta change the spring. And then it comes with a, what size is that one? Well, it looks like a number three. So it comes with a number three. So I could put a number three. If I got a number three, oh yeah, I might have a number three line and then I don't have to tap that. Okay, so anyway, another thing, another, another thing. Uh, so the way I've got this fuel line run back here this line is getting kind of hard. It was kind of pressing up against the firewall real bad. So I think what we're going to do is, uh, I'm gonna get a 90 degree fit. And I think I've got some real close 90 degrees and try to do a 90, like, like a little loop and go up so that this is off of the firewall. 
I got the new MSD uh, piece I'm gonna put back here. I need a hold down and closer. Just messing with this MSD cam sink. So the way they tell you to do this is to take, loosen the collar, take the gasket off. There's no gasket. And then put this thing down until it bottoms out and then put the gasket back on it. And then that will pull it up the perfect amount. Uh, now this is a small block Chevrolet. So this is rotating clockwise the 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 cam button as you spin it so what you do i want it on digital falling so we'll have to set this up in the car i'm gonna have to change this in because it's wrong but what we'll do is the light on there is no magnet so essentially we will turn this thing the opposite direction that it normally turns the button the rotor turns because we're simulating the rotor turning when this led light goes off that would be digital rising we keep going when it comes back on that is the edge of digital falling. So I'd probably just go back just a little bit till it turns off right there. And then boom, that should be set. That right there is it sitting out of the oil pump. So you can see it definitely, this may be easier than my, my old method guys. It really may, or it may not. In theory, it's going to be easier anyway. So that's the part number the one that I got. Small block Chevrolet, big block Chevrolet. We'll see how it goes. Uh, now this has got a melanized gear is what they called it, I think. And it was very specific. It sent a lot of lube. It said make sure you lube the crap out of it. Now the O-rings, not going to put the O-rings on it. Because uh, they usually tear and rip going down in there. Okay, so I'm going to put it back on there. Um, figure out how to hold it in there so it doesn't fall out since I don't have a distributor hold down. And then, uh, then we'll turn it over and put the pan on. Okay, I think we're almost to the stopping point. This is where I wanted to get tonight. Got the oil filter on it. I had to put a plug here because I couldn't find my number six cap that goes to the turbo. I just put six quarts of Rotella in this thing. Uh, rock arms are adjusted, intakes on, oil pans on, six quarts of oil in it. It is not pouring oil everywhere. So now uh, make sure this is the out of the filter, which is the inside. This is the filtered oil coming up through here. The reason I know that is because this is filtered oil coming into uh, the turbo. So you follow this one around, it goes in to the block on the end side. So the bottom port is the oil out from the pump. And so there you go. So uh, let me go get my primer and we're gonna prime this thing up real fast and then we'll turn it over a few revolutions and uh, hopefully we'll have oil coming to all of these rock arms. All right guys, now we're gonna prime the oil system. Got this handy dandy oiler that we made a long time ago from an old distributor. Very easy to use. I mean, you can buy one of these also. It basically just goes down in there, you hold it, and it spins the oil pump. Let me go get a drill. So we're not gonna be spinning this thing super hard. So we're just gonna be seeing if we can get some oil through the system, and then we should be good to go. And feel the pressure. And here it's starting to squirt through there. Oil flow. Look at this. Oil, 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 oil. We got it on every one of them. And we did not put restrictors in it this time. So we'll see how this works out.
What is that noise? Oh, we have a problem. We have a problem, problem. There's something wrong. What in the world is that noise? Freaking kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Oil paint is gonna come back off. All right, we got oil pressure. Oil paint has got to come off. Dang it! Uh, apparently, um, I can feel it. One of the rods or rod bolts or something is hitting the oil pan. I can feel it. pain is dented the old pain is dented from where it hit the steering rack at some point
100%. All right, so oil paint has got to come off. We have oil pressure. We'll let all this drain overnight. I'll come back tomorrow night. Uh, we'll pull the paint off of it. Turn it back over. Um, get a paint off of it and figure out where it's hitting. It does not have a winded windage tray in it. But I can feel the dent. I saw the dent earlier, but it, it didn't make any difference with the other, I guess, short stroke. But this one, it is hitting 100%. All right, guys, well, we got oil pressure, but we got problems. Okay, so I went ahead and took it off. Uh, you can see on a couple of these rod bolts, uh, it's hard to see. I mean, the rod bolts are pretty hard, but you can see the material. But you can see in the oil pan here, right there, it's scraping there and there. And so I guess, I don't know if that was a windage tray or not because the motor is turning this way. So I guess, I mean, we don't run a gasket, so I guess it's just a little close because we don't run a gasket. So what we'll do, uh, tomorrow I'll get in here and clean this out real good. And basically we're just gonna hammer the bottom of this oil pan so that it is, uh, you can see it is kinda, kinda beat up a little bit. It is up. So we'll push it back down, hammer it back down. And then I think we'll be good. We'll turn it over without the oil pan on it and it is silky smooth. So one of the problems with more stroke is, yeah, you don't think about this. All right, we're out.